and uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh uh, no. Well, at least I'm parked. There's 30k coming. Good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time it is for you, and welcome back to another day in the life of a miner, guys. I'm really excited to be back. It's been it's been a while, hasn't it? I have not done a video in this series in probably over a month, right? Probably probably two months. We have been deep in the content creation rabbit hole. Lots of guides, uh, lots of things trying to help new players, lots of things trying to help veteran players learn aspects of the game, the different gameplay loops. We dove into salvaging because the vulture came out. And now we're kind of back into mining. A lot of exciting things have happened, guys, in the time that I've been gone. We've had Citizen Con has came out with Pyro announced. We've had the IAE, which is still going on right now. The Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Pugh, I could lord, that is a mouthful Thank you. to Please say. And they've announced a new mining ship. I'm excited to do a video covering the new mining ship. Uh, and today we're gonna go to Lyria. So we're gonna get that set up in the quantum drive real quick. But I'm pretty excited for this new mining ship. Well, this is frustrating. I'm gonna do this annoying thing again where it's gonna make me jump somewhere so that way I can quantum. Let's see if we can fix this problem real quick. Can I quantum to this? Too close. All right, a little troubleshooting here. Let's clear route. I think you can set it to Hurston though, right? Yeah, 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 I can set it to Hurston. Let's jump to Hurston. And see if we can overrule this quantum setting problem that it's giving us right now. So let's just do that real quick. All right, we're back, and we are on the dark side of Hurston, where we cannot see anything at all. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Now let's see if that fixed our quantum problem. Can we jump to Art Core? We can jump to Art Core. Can we jump to Lyria? We can jump to Lyria. All right, let's get this spun up in the quantum drive, and I will see you guys in a minute. And we have arrived here in Art Core. Fantastic. Man, these quantum drives get better and better by the day, I'll tell you guys what. So the new mining ship they announced, the RSI Arastra. Arastra? All right, everyone keeps saying Arasta, but I think it's Arastra because there's an R at the A of it. Anyway, that is a crazy ship. Have you guys seen the specs on that thing? Like it has quad turrets. So like, just like the turret on the Scorpius is quad guns. It has quad gun turrets. I think it has three of them. That is nuts. And it has three mining turrets, all operated from the cozy safety of the inside of the ship. They are remote controlled. That's pretty nice. Not to mention that they are size three lasers. I think that's pretty nifty. Like that's not something you would expect because that means it is going to change the way that the mining loop kind of plays out right now because we only go up to size two. So size three, like are they gonna create a whole new brand and lineup of lasers? Are they gonna have like, instead of, you know, Helix 2, we're gonna have Helix 3, Hofstede size 3. Can you imagine a Hofstede size 3, the range that thing would probably have? Like you're talking probably over 200 meters of range. Cause Hofstede right now has what, over a hundred, right? I think, I think it has over a hundred. I mean, absolutely crazy. All right. Well, let's find us a some ore deposits and let's see if there's something good out here. Scan. Oh, yep, that's what we want. I know it's kind of hard to see, guys, but that is definitely mineable deposits. I'll hit it again. Let's see. Let me hang on. Let me increase my speed real quick. Yeah, we zoom in there. You can see the little dots right there. And one, two, three, four, five. Got this cloud ceiling, which is always sketches me out. I always find that very, very unsettling to go through. Uh, there's not a lot. I see one way off in the distance there. You see it right now, 29, 30 kilometers away. That could be something. That, that could be something. Let's see. It's probably these rocks you got right on this hill. So hopefully we get something good here. Really hoping for some quantanium. Oh, there's another one. Let's see what that is. 
What do we got here? What's the 620? That's a had a night deposit. Just one. If you guys don't know how to night deposits usually come in, well I shouldn't say usually, they always come in multiples of 620. So if you see one single 620, that's scan really fast. That's kind of weird. 30% Terranite, okay. I heard some people saying scanning wasn't working, but I feel like they lied to me. Scanning is definitely working. I think what's not working, the little thing at the bottom left, uh, the distance range, the laser range is not working still. That has been a problem since 3.20 when they implemented this new UI. So I need to submit a trouble report for that. I feel like they're not really taking that very seriously. Boris, Boris, a lot of Boris here. Don't get me wrong, Boris is pretty good and it breaks really, really nicely. So I might break these. What's this? More Boris. Gold. Mm, I don't know though. A lot of effort for gold. I don't even know if I want it. It's gonna be super mixed in. Gold doesn't fracture very well. That's yellow. Of course it's yellow. Alright, let's just back up. We're not gonna do those. We will do these two though. These two are pretty nice looking. Yeah, these are real sizable. 40% boris. Aluminum's not bad. A lot of inert material though. Kinda iffy about that. Alright, if you run my loadout with the Hofsteeds in the back and the Helix up front, 50 to 52 is right around the money mark you want to be. And then you just tilt the ship just where the rock's out of sight of the bottom, put on the stability, the top out of the seat, and let's get to it. Let's break our first rock. I have not really done a lot of mining in 3.21 to be honest with you guys. I have I think two work orders in, that's not a lot. I used to have a lot more. I, I was big in the salvage to make a lot of money for a while, like I think <laughs> like everyone else in the game was when that was like really hot. Uh, the hot thing now is ERT bounties. Now that's not as widespread as a problem because it's not as accessible because it takes quite a bit of time to grind up to ERT bounties. So that is kind of a bummer all right all right let's get to it let's see he's up all right i wonder if instability has got fixed because instability used to go like wild off the chain i had an issue with it i know a lot of other big miners had issues with it and just the community in general like right now you'd be like oh it's kind of going up slowly and the next thing you know it would shoot up to like way into the overcharge zone just like on a whim and this is, it seems to be going up pretty nicely. I could probably make this go up a lot faster if I turned on the stampede, but I don't want it to get to the point it's uncontrollable. It's almost like no instability makes it even worse. Although this is pretty low instability, let's see. I'm really nervous right now. I'm so scared so I'm gonna jump up. Going pretty fast. Pretty fast. Up to 30 percent i think we're we're looking pretty good this is looking solid and we can just drop the laser power if we need to and yeah we can just throttle this throttle is my term for when you turn the laser on and off is throttling beautiful flawless give us a little give us a break there we go these are gonna need sub breaks okay All right, all right. All the inert materials in one chunk. Okay. All right, well, let's hop out of here. There's no point scanning all these. They're going to be way too big for me to break with, or way too small for me to break with the helix. So the mining laser setup I run, I really should make a video for it and showcase it. So the helix has two Riker C3s and a stampede. The stampede's to help with instability because it's generally pretty high. And it also gives a nice 35% buff in the laser power, plus the 50% I'm getting from the two Rikers. And then on the back, I have two Hofsteeds. Uh, one reason is because of their range. Their range complements the, the Helix very nicely. The optimal range for the Helix is going to be very close, if not in the optimal range, for these Hofsteeds which makes it very, very clutch if you have support lasers. And I also have the rear laser set up to be support lasers. So like the stats of the Hofstede are just really, really good. 
and one is set up with a focus three in the torrent which is the one i have now which is all passive and the other one is another torrent and a torpid because if i'm using both of these the assumption is that's what's going on then it will be way 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 better this just increases my optimal charge window by um a hundred percent i believe so it should be easy peasy to break these because it's going to make my charge window so much more bigger i have a really low minimum laser power and it's just, all in all it's just a better experience and then it charges faster too so it i have to make it worth it to hop in one of these back lasers and the only way to make it worth it to hop in one of these back lasers is to make it charge faster and easier that's that's the goal so as a solo person I have surges and I carry three surges, two sets of three. So in case I need to like, if I burn through them all because I messed something up, I can always just, you know, pop another set on it. But by doing it this way, I have a helix, which if I set it up right with the stuff I bring on hand can crack up to 60K by itself. And you won't find very many rocks over 60K. And then on top of that, I can still turn around and add these two Hofsteeds, which is just increase the rock range, but also it's gonna make it a lot easier to mine those rocks because the buffs are gonna offset what is happening uh, that the Helix is doing. The Helix drops resistance, it also makes the charge window smaller, but you don't have to build your lasers to combat instability because multiple lasers from the same ship, not a lot of people know this, drops instability dramatically as opposed to multiple lasers from different ships like three prospectors instead of three mole lasers drastically increase instability so it's supposed to be an incentive to use lasers from the same ship which i'd imagine is why the aras is going to probably have such large lasers on it with large ranges because you're going to need that big range to reach out and touch rocks because they're probably going to be very very spaced out i would imagine but hey, size three lasers, a lot of people question whether or not that's going to make the mole obsolete. I don't think so. I think the mole will become a great support mining ship, if I'm being honest. Because I can put size ones on it, I can put size twos on it, and those can be really helpful. Like, I mean, I don't know, you could just roll around with a Hofstede size twos, right? That have this like crazy range and really low power and you could set them up kind of how mine are set up or you could even put like power modules to make them more powerful and they can be very excellent support lasers in that way to benefit the Arasta. But I, I don't know, it's kind of all on personal preference. It'll be a lot to figure out. I think the Arasta is gonna bring a lot of life to the mining gameplay loop and is really gonna make it quite lucrative because I mean, you spin with the way refinery capacities are, which really needs to be changed. I, guys, we need to petition them to change mining capacities. Because like right now, I could go into any refinery and it is probably thousands of percent over capacity. That is, it's just ridiculous. Like, why is the capacity threshold so low? It is ungodly low. I have only seen low refinery capacities in like the PTU. And even then, like, I can put a work order in and it'll jump the percent to like 50%. I'm like, that's nuts, man. Like, every refinery you go to has a large surcharge that gets added to your mining order. It's like, why? It's, 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 there's not that many people plugging in work orders, you know what I mean? It's, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's like that. I don't think it's intentional. I wonder if there is some, like, server mixing that's going on or... The capacity is just not right, but it, it just does not make a lot of sense to me that it happens that way. I've always wondered that ever since I like started this game and mining and saw the like I looked at other refineries to check different capacities. I'm like, oh, maybe mine's just a really popular one. No, they're all like that. They are all way, way, way over capacity. And I thought, well, maybe lower or higher is a bit different, you know? Like, okay, well, maybe like. Uh, if it's like a thousand percent over it's a medium capacity and like two thousand percent over is like a large capacity Nope, nope, nope. That is not the case whatsoever. It is not even close. It is 100% that <laughs> It is like once it is over a hundred percent. It is just like way too high We're about to have a pure borace load here. I just noticed that we have a one SCU of aluminum And that is crazy. Yeah, like see what I mean by borace breaks really really clean like that was so i have one scu of aluminum 
nothing but bore a cells we are 17 minutes into this run and now we're just going to walk over here break this other Boris rock and it will probably fill up our mole so not the most exciting run you know what i mean it's nothing you know super crazy uh type deal but it's still a very profitable run i mean this run will probably run me i would guess over a quarter million by itself which is very 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 respectable for a mining run i mean to come down to the surface have rocks that you immediately want that are of adequate size with the kind of ore you want in it i mean there's only so much you can really ask for in a rock although this needs to be changed i don't know if the helix is going to be worth it for this i don't want to hop in my off steed just to hop out of it though we'll see Got 16 resistance, but it's just a just a 9k rock. 9k is pretty small. I think we'll hop in the Hofsteed on the left, which is my one that is built for uh, rapid charging, and then that way it's not taking that 5% hit in laser power that the Focus 3 is giving my other side. And this is where that differentiating in turrets just comes in handy. You know, it automatically is going to boost the charge window, which isn't small anyway. It charges really fast. I don't really need the torpid. I'm probably not going to use it because it's unnecessary to, like, use it if it's not, like, needed. I usually like that for things that are, like, really sketchy or, like, I'm in a hurry type deal. Probably going to need to jack up the laser power, though. Yeah, 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 see? The helix would have been way too strong for this. This is doing it at, like, 60% power, so that helix would have absolutely just shot this thing into the overcharge zone without a doubt but i think the torpid's really handy because it only works overcharge or optimal charge individually so like if you pop into overcharge it will reduce the overcharge charge rate but it will not help your optimal charge rate but if you're in the optimal charge window it will help your optimal charge so i thought that was a pretty nifty thing that it did kind of finicky though this broke a little bit smaller than the last one. Uh, now it's just finding the good pieces. So there has to be some pure Boris pieces. I know that first piece I scanned was pretty okay, but there's probably some better ones. What's this big guy here? Looks like a good one. I mean, this rock was 50% Boris, so it has to, it has to be something good. Yeah, there we go. Let's just increase laser power to speed this up a little bit. Let's see the laser power glitch is still going strong. And come on, come on. There we go. And it just charges so fast. Look at that. Outpacing how fast I'm heating up the rock. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, like the, I think the Tor is a very slept on module for a support laser. Like for when it comes to being like a auxiliary laser, it is just so, so helpful. And when you're mining a solo in the mole, I think having those different laser setups really helps you because my thing with these laser setups is it's not to break the biggest rocks possible, it's to break the most common size large rocks I'm probably gonna find and break them efficiently because I don't I don't wanna lose rock, you know what I mean? I don't wanna have like a huge quantanium rock and overheat it just a little bit and then I'm losing this like significant chunk of the rock. I would prefer not to do that. And by having the ability that my helix can break these 60k rocks by itself now i'll buy it it takes some experience to use that pretty appropriately like do not get me wrong like it is really scary to try to break a 60k rock like by yourself like that takes it takes some practice because it's probably going to be a really small optimal charge window so you really have to throttle it and if you're in a bad server oh you can forget it chief like that is absolutely not happening yeah, we're gonna fill up on pure Borace. This is this is a solid solid haul. This is a very respectable run. We're gonna have it definitely in under 30 minutes. So as far as under 30 minutes goes, I mean, yeah, you can't get much better than that. Under 30 minutes means that we could do two of these, 
and we're talking half a mil an hour. I mean, that is by no means a bad haul at all. And only have to break two rocks, and they're breaking so cleanly. Oh, so nice. Didn't even have to get out of the mole. And that's the trick. Like, it's knowing, like, what different materials do and how they're going to break and, like, how they affect each other and stuff like that. Like, all that just kind of plays in and is really helpful when you're out mining because you can just, like, look at this and I could be like, oh, okay, this is all, you know, borase. It's 50% borase. Well, I know borase breaks really nicely. Look at that. Almost 96 SUs completely of Boris. And if I had to guess, this load is probably going to run me about 350? Probably about 350,000 if I had to solidly guess. I know you guys are probably confused with my time estimate. Remember that, you know, the quantum travel is exceptionally fast here on YouTube. It's obnoxiously quick. So, and just like that, we're going to be back in her L2 before you know it. But I'm excited for the Arasta, though. I am a bit disappointed it's probably not coming out for some time like it's definitely not coming out next quarter but i judging by what i've seen and what i've read i believe it is white box complete uh one of you uh nerds that really follows this stuff might know a bit better than me but i'm pretty sure it's white box complete and if it's white box complete i mean that is that is solid because that is going to absolutely change the mining outlook of this game crazy because it's an onboard refinery, and I don't know if you guys have looked into it, but it has, what, what was it? Uh, 512 refined ore capacity. So it's not cargo capacity, it's just refined ore. I'm like, but for just refined ore, like, that is absolutely nuts. That's like almost as much as a C2, but you're the mining ship, so I wonder if you could mine and it goes straight into the refinery. All right, we'll be right back after this. Boom! And like when we started, YouTube has the fastest XL YouTube quantum drive. It's absolutely spectacular. You guys, you have to get yourselves one of these. It's absolutely spectacular. I, I can't get enough of it. But yeah, the Arasta with 512 cards, but it also has 64 SEUs of cargo space. You can fit rocks in it. They even showed it. You can fit two rocks in it. That's crazy. You know how nuts that is? Like you and your friends, the pilot, three mining lasers, and then two you know, weirdos downstairs in the rocks. And you could run a whole mining gambit just like the, what, five, five, six, six of you. I mean, six of you could absolutely just have a blast. You could go find a mining deposit, drop the little rock dudes off. They go drive off. They do their thing. I mean, it takes like 10, 15 minutes to break a rock thing anyway. They go over there. They break their rocks. They have to scoop it all up. I mean, actually, it really takes them like 15, 20 minutes, right? And there's two of them. And they finish that. You finish breaking a rock cluster that's nearby. And, like, you scoop them up. And, like, you go about your business. But you could do that for so long you have to fill up 512 SUs of cargo I mean it took us 20 minutes right I mean if we cut out all the transportation time right like all the time it took us to get to where we were going I mean really we spent like 15 minutes on those rocks like 15 20 minutes so solidly you can do that have a pleasant stay and it's that's that's so crazy like honestly I think that's pretty cool I think that's like one of the coolest ships like they could have made like as far as mining goes i don't think the orion is in-game mining i think the arasta is in-game mining like they really kind of made the orion i don't want to say they made it not cool but it's just this giant honker of a ship that only does space mining and doesn't really feel multi-role like, don't get me wrong like if you think about the arasta having a, a capacity to hold 512 like, well, I guess it's already released, right? Isn't it like 16,000 on the Orion? Which is nuts, don't get me wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. E easy, girl, easy. Let me turn the speed down. There we go. But I mean, 16,000 capacity is a lot, but where are they gonna sell, right? Like, how's the Orion gonna sell? Isn't it like the Arasta, like, I could go on a mining trip with the boys for you. you know whatever like 
an hour, two hours, three hours, however long it takes. We'll probably say probably two, three hours to fill up a whole Rasta, right? That seems reasonable. Fill it up, refine it all, probably over the course of three, four hours. And then we can go sell it. And I mean, you think I sell an entire load of whatever I'm refi you know, mining and refining in a mole in my C2. And I mean, that thing's going for, I mean, my caterpillar loads would go for millions. So you're talking at least, you know, I'd say 5 million over the course of that time. So you're averaging out a million an hour, no refinery costs. And, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh no, oh no. Well, at least I'm parked. Is there a 30k coming? And no one said anything. Come on. Come on. Well, this is unfortunate. Not like this. Not like this. We're right here. We're we're right here. Come on, just just open the door. Just open the door. Aha. Whew. Almost didn't make it. Whew. Okay. Alright. That was that was kind of nerve-wracking. That was nerve-wracking. Alright. It's feeling a little wonky. All right, girl, come on. Welcome to the great. Vehicle Let's the store. System. Yeah, the server. She's struggling. She's struggling. All right, we don't need this. We don't need to store the ship. We don't, we don't need that. There's a 30k coming. No one's talking about it. There's a 30k coming. No one's talking about it. Just run, 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 run. I don't think I'm gonna lose what's in my ship, right? It's already parked, but like, I don't know. Still makes me nervous. At least this elevator works. But I'm excited. I'm excited to do the video on the Arasta, talk about all of its features, what it has, uh, where it's at in development. It's it's a really exciting ship. I think it's going to add a whole lot of breath of life to it. But if that's coming out, right, seemingly in the next year, we'll assume, then that means the refining ship, where all it does is refine, probably coming out too. And people say, like, oh, well, what's the point of all that? I mean, once base building comes in, like all these resources, like you know how much resources it's realistically probably going to take to build some of these uh, settlements that people want to build? Like, probably a lot. So Hi. having Hi. someone Hi. that can go mine it and refine things is going to be absolutely like? uh, helpful. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Not good. Uh, you know, we're talking about hey, it. Hey, back again, I see. Welcome. Come on, come on, girl. See anything you like? All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to get the satisfying see of how much value is left in that thing. But with 96 SCU full race, you know, times 3,500, I mean, you're probably looking at easily 350,000, if not. Uh, 400,000 SCU. So, pretty solid haul. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been a blast. Please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps out tremendously here on the show. And we're almost monetized as of the making of this video. So, you guys would be amazing if you could do that. We had an awesome community here. Join the Legion. We'll see you guys next time.